Crawford here, uh, Matt Kahn, James Kleinman is coming soon, other people that we've had. But he has really outdone himself with our special guest today. For we have, as that special guest, the co-founder of the Unity Movement, Myrtle Fillmore. I truly appreciate your graciousness. Good morning. It is my great joy to be here today. And uh, prior to my leaving this earthly plane, I told the people around me that I was leaving so that I could come in the spirit to be a greater help to the unity movement. And I have been true to my word and I have been with the unity in the gold country from the very foundation when Reverend Joe Sloan and his beautiful wife Lynn had the vision and they had the prayer that manifested this beautiful, beautiful place, this spiritual dwelling. And I look out here of all the faithful congregation as well, that you were drawn to their prayers and their vision. I know this fellow Reverend Joe very well, and his, and of course, your minister, Reverend Jerry. I'm bringing these papers so that I don't forget the points I want to let share with you today. So, um, because of them, the Spirit of God can be felt here in a mighty way. It is these men, Joe and Jerry, with their faith, their devotion, their love of God, and their love of you, that unity in the gold country exists today. We love them. There have been times when both of them have reached out to me through the ether streets for some difficult times and I have helped them. I've assisted them in the spirit. I have heard their prayers. I hope you know that you can reach out also at any time. I hear your prayers and I assist you every day. There is no time or space in prayer. We have a mighty spiritual bond. After all, there is only one presence. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And, and um, we do know that we could not have achieved that all that we have achieved, all the men and women who have done the wonderful work here through almost 20 years now. Um, but we couldn't have done it without special help, spiritual help from the other realm. And certainly that would come from you and Charles. And so we thank you for that. And by the way, I do know that you were born in uh, 1845, and I must say you're looking wonderfully well. <laughs> <laughs> wonderfully oh, well for 174. <laughs> Not looking a day over 100. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. You're, you're lovely, a lovely person to, to read those remarks. And, well, you know, age was never something for Charles and I not a problem for us. Uh, actually, sometimes I would jokingly turn to Charles and I would, and when I needed to know how old I was for some reason, would say, Charles, how old am I? <laughs> and then of course he would figure it out for me. But age was, uh, I did not live being a certain age. And we encouraged our followers to have the same idea. You do not need to be in that aging process idea. I mentioned earlier that I passed on, not due to ill health, but disease, but because I chose to be of more help on the other side. I remember the day well that I left. I was 86 years old. 
And I had spent the day working as I always did in the office, writing letters, uh, working with people, giving them spiritual guidance. And um, then during the day, later in the day, I went to one of the office buildings, which was four flights up, and I walked up those four flights to say goodbye to all those people that I loved so dearly in Unity. Then I went out uh, to the apple orchard where Uni in Unity's, uh, where we had a garden, and I picked apples. I loved being in the outdoors, and nature is truly the glorified face of God. See the beauty about you, and you do see the manifestation of the infinite mind. We're so lucky to be always in this beautiful, beautiful area. Wherever you are has beauty. I then went home and passed on to the other side. Use your minds well. Deny anything that is negative. Give positive affirmations for your life. Live healthfully from the spirit that is within you and know that you can choose your time of passing just by your very mind. It does not have to be from illness or disease. Thank you, Lou, for that reminder. And we remember as a starting point that uh, your illness was really the beginning, the foundation of reunity. The, the illness and the ultimate healing could not have happened. We would not be here today but for that. So we, uh, we bless you. We know that you had tuberculosis uh, at an early age. It often left you weak and bedridden. Uh, I have a great appreciation for that myself as my young mother and young sister both died of tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. I wish they had known you then. Probably they would be here. Yeah, I think so. Anyhow, you, uh, uh, at the age of 41, I believe it was, 41, you were taken to a, uh, a speaker who was in, touring the country, and it was in Kansas City. His name was E.B. Weeks, a rather famous person to us now. And during that lecture, he, he said something that was so special to you uh, that it changed you, changed your situation, and then really has changed as the basis for unity today. Um, some of us know that story fairly well, but we would love to hear you say it, what happened that day, and what it was you heard, and how that affected you. Thank you, Joe, for asking. I had a voluminous uh, correspondence at Unity Village, and many people asked me this very thing, wanting to know how they too could be healed. So I will read you a letter that I wrote explaining the experience and how it changed my life and what they could do to change their life. My dear friend in unity, in answer to your question, it is important to realize that these were very, very desperate times for me. I was weak, emaciated. I had been told that I was dying from TV and had only a short time to live. Doctors had given up on me, and as so had my family, except for Charles. I was a wife and a young mother. I had a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Our little boys, Lyle and Rich, were depending upon me to, keep, to care for them, as well as did my husband, Charles, who was busy making a living for us selling real estate. Mr. E.B. Weeks was a seminary student associated with Emma Curtis Hopkins, who was known as the teacher's teacher. My husband, Charles, took me to this lecture, and being desperate, I was open and receptive to a miracle. I was weak. I was emaciated. And as I leaned on Charles's arm, I knew how much I wanted to live for my family. Every mother at some time has the thought, the terrifying thought, that she will not be able to live to raise her children. 
For me, it was either receive a miracle or die. During the course of that lecture, I heard Mr. Weeks say a sentence that pierced my soul and gave me a whole new vision of myself. And that line was, I am a child of God, therefore I do not inherit illness. I want you to pause, my dear friend at Unity, and take that in. And I would like all of you to take that in as well. Especially if you are currently having an illness of any kind, I want you to take it in. And if that illness is dominating your life, understand these words. Particularly if you, like me, have grown up being told that you are less than whole, that someone had told you that you're sickly or weak. I am a child of God, therefore I do not inherit illness. Take those words into your heart and soul and let them speak to the very cells of your body and of your being, your true being. Let them call forth your true identity let those words take hold of your awareness and let them minister onto you as they ministered onto me all those years ago. Do not let the power of these words be lost in their simplicity. I heard nothing else that Mr. Weeks said except those words that became my truth and the truth of my being. In that moment I knew that my life was not over, that illness did not have control of me. I knew that there was one true power and one true presence that is within me. It was my life, my vitality, my one true presence. There was no other life to be had. I left that lecture convinced and knowing that I was already healed. I was a different person than the one who had gone to that meeting, that lecture on Charles's arm. One clear moment was all it took. Doubters may say, ah, this is too simple. Surely there must have been something more, something you rubbed on yourself, words that were spoken over you, vibrations that were set up for you. No, I, this did not happen. This was the simple way that it happened that I'm explaining to you. Humans' deepest fear is not that they are inadequate. The deepest fear that we have as humans is that we are powerful beyond measure. To paraphrase Mary Ann William, your author Mary Ann Williamson, you are power beyond measure. I pray that you will have the courage to let go of the fear and find your true identity, always relying on your own inner knowing. God bless you on your way. Yours in light and love, Myrtle Page Fillmore. Thank you, Lynn Murray. You spent the next two years using those words of which you spoke in order to heal yourself. You spoke, as I understand it, to the very the organs, the tissues, the cells of your body, and you told them that you loved them. You apologized for them and, and to your body for ever thinking these negative thoughts during these periods of illness. And they listened, obviously they listened. And then in 1888, I believe it was, uh, the doctors informed you that you are completely free of tuberculosis. Amazing. And wonderful. Amazing. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So, I thank you, Joe, for expressing the ideas that you have here. I just see such an illuminated light as I look over at the members of this congregation. Yes, indeed. You see, 
I spoke words of truth to my body and to my organs, to my mind, to my cells. I practiced the presence of illuminated light. I practiced the presence of the one. I stopped telling myself lies about who I was or wasn't, and I stopped believing that I was powerless. Having grown up in a strict Methodist uh, household, I didn't have a very good opinion of myself in relationship to God, and many of you might have had that same experience. You see, the image that you have of God and who you are in relationship to God is crucial in life and especially in healing work. I had told every fiber of my being that I was a child of God, and of course, every fiber of my being responded to the truth of those words. You must know it in your bones. You must know it in your bone marrow, literally. I think it's important to acknowledge that uh, it it took two years of using the same words and prayer in order for your body to finally recognize and respond to you. Now in uh, modern times with us, we are too impatient for that. Two years, we couldn't wait. Did you ever feel uh, discouraged during these two years and thinking the possibility that you might not be cured? It's a very good question. You must remember that for the best part of 40 years, I had been weak and sickly. So two years was nothing. From that meeting, I had come away with an idea that saved my life and eventually led me to help and hold us. I was set afire with those words. But more importantly, the words that I heard, I am a child of God and I do not inherit sickness, were what we would call anointed words. Anointed words. There was a power in them that moved my soul. There is a power in them that can move your soul. I was convinced by them of the truth that they told. You could say that I believed in my mind what my body took a while to catch up with. But the change in my external form assured me that on the ins that I of that form they so assured me on the inside. I knew in my soul I wasn't sick, I would never be sick again, and I retained my health fully. The body just took some time to catch up with what the mind already knew. I began to live my life in a way of knowing. I shook off fear. I began to release words of illness. I woke each day in gratitude. And I spent the days working as a strong, vibrant woman. Maybe it took time because I needed to understand how the healing process worked so that I could use it later after we founded Unity. My health my healing experience of speaking spiritual words, my healing experience of speaking spiritual words of truth to the physical realm became the foundation of all of our work in unity. I'd like to repeat that again. The healing experience of speaking spiritual words of truth to the physical realm became the foundation of our work in unity. Yes, indeed. Uh, your husband, Charles, was so affected by the healing that you had that, that he indeed became a student of the truth and became the great mystic that uh, his writings have helped so many people, thousands of people down through the years, teaching them about the secrets of this wonderful spiritual movement that we call unity. Yes, it's a joy to know that it is worldwide. Worldwide started from, a, from the message, one sentence. 
Correct. You see the conviction that came with those words created a whole new body within me. There was no thought of illness or weakness, only the confidence and strength moving ahead, sharing this good news with others and helping others heal just as I had. There was this burning desire for me, to, for others, to help others experience their bodies and their lives. And what St. Paul says is the glorious, the glorious freedom of the children of God. Because I went from a life of slavery to the physical world, to a life of freedom, of health and wholeness, I went from despair and despondency to joy and hope. In time, we both, Charles and I, both sum, summed up our philosophy or belief system with one line of scripture, Christ, our hope of glory. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Once we came to realize that we were loved children of God, then we came to know that each of us is a Christ. We came to know that the presence and power of God lies within us as our true identity. It is your true identity. Thank you. Coming all too soon to the close of our precious time together. But before we leave, would you bless us with a healing meditation? Thank you, Joe. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, my beloved, my beloved family at UGC. As I look around and see the beauty, the beauty that is here of your spirit. It is my joy to lead you in healing meditation. I would like nothing more than you to have the healing experience that I had and to know that you can have it right now. Expect a miracle. A miracle is coming. We are going to get at the heart of it, the presence of God which is in your heart as love. First of all, I invite you to relax. Just relax. Put your feet on the floor. Relax your entire body into your chair. Breathe deeply yet naturally. There cannot be healing and worry and healing and anxiety or healing and fear. There can only be healing and hope. Healing and experience healing, expectancy, and wholeness. So we breathe in, you breathe in fully the life of God, and we let go of any and all other distractions as we breathe out. I breathe in confidence, faith, conviction, knowing, truth. And I breathe out any untruth and allow it to dissolve in the ethers. The Christ of my being, my perfection, my wholeness, and my divine inheritance I claim right here, right now. There is only one idea about me, and that is the divine idea, that I am a loved child of God. I am made in the image and likeness of my mother, father, God, in the image and substance of spirit. Breathing in and breathing out gently, I release and let go of any and all other ideas. I know now the truth of my being. I am whole, perfect, and complete. I allow the truth of those words to fill my mind and thoughts. I am healed. I am whole. 
My body and my being is filled with the truth of God's own wisdom, God's own love, God's own power. I speak now to any part of my body that has been identified in the past or sickly or ill. And if you wish to lay your hand upon any part or near that part, I speak words of truth to that part. These words of strength and power. Be whole. Know who and what you are. Allow the light of the divine to renew and revitalize every cell of your body. Right now, be whole. Accept your divine inheritance. You, you are loved unconditionally. There is no other truth. I will have no other false beliefs before me. As, I, as you go forth now with your life from this moment, knowing that you are healed, that you are well, and so it is. Amen. I affirm the truth of my being. Although I don't know that this was a common thing in your day, but we do it here now. So would you bless me with a hug? <laughs> <laughs> I always love to hear your Irish jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Another big hand.